We're both uh, partners and we're thinking about moving to Switzerland seriously. Um, I will give you a short background about ourselves. I am 33 years old, turning 34 in the end of January. He's 30 years old, turning 31 in February. I have a Polish passport. We both live in Israel. He also has a dual citizenship. He has an Australian passport, if it helps. Um, and uh, he's uh, working in high tech. He has two bachelor degrees in physics and computer science. And he wants to try and attend a university in Switzerland, try ETH, EPFL, and Bern University. And he's trying to apply. It's not easy. Uh, we will know only on March. Uh, but because he's 30 years old, we thought we read that maybe he's not eligible to apply for a student visa because of his age. So we were thinking maybe through me, through family reunification visa, being in a registered partnership or married, maybe it can help. And I really want to work in Switzerland in tourism because We've been to Switzerland. We have many friends, both local and also Israelis that moved to Switzerland. And it seems like might be a really good fit for us. But we're having a bit of a, uh, we have some questions regarding issues like bureaucracy or anything else. Maybe you could help us with that. Well, do you, do you have any experience at all in the job market in Switzerland? Or you're really, it's a project, but you haven't really looked into it in terms of uh, what I the... Did. Uh, I actually uh, interviewed at two companies in Zurich. Uh, one was Facebook and another one was called uh, Data Lian, which is a, like a startup company, I think. I don't know if it's familiar. Yeah, it does, yeah. Okay. So you, and you didn't get the job? No, I had three interviews with each and eventually they just said uh, no. But it's interesting because you have an Australian nationality. What's the second one? Uh, Israeli. And you were able to get interviews because you would be considered non-EU and you still got interviews. Yeah, well maybe that's uh, why eventually I got a negative response because they didn't want to go through the uh, headache of getting me a visa, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's the reason because if you, but it's it's interesting that they had you go through all these interviews if they knew already. Uh, do you have it on your resume? What, Mr. Are... Yes. Uh... He, he also wrote that he is in a registered partnership with me that might help, that I'm an EU citizen. Yeah, but the way it would work is that the company would still need to do his, pa his paperwork. Okay. Because, because you're not employed in Switzerland. So if you were to get a job in Switzerland, and then he would come as partnership, as you said, but if he's going on his own to find a job, uh, then at this stage, you know, you're not employed there. So he's going at it on, on his own, basically. So uh, it's the first person, basically, that counts, that gets a job. So ideally, it would have to be the EU person that gets the job first. And then the non-EU would uh, get the partnership uh, re reun reunitement. I can't speak uh, reunion. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and basically that's how it works. So it's a little bit complicated. It's like which one is first, the egg of or the? <laughs> uh, it's a little bit complicated um, to get a job. Of course, now with everything that's going on, also worldwide, it's complicated as well. Uh, to bring people from outside of EU. I think it's complicated from all ends. It's the visa, it's the paperwork, it's also the lockdowns and everything. So uh, right now, I think people are just on a, on a thing where they prepare. They yes. just look at the market. That's what I tell people. Look at the market, see a little bit where you could be a good fit. I think probably you have a better fit because of the physics and the tech background. Uh, because I said there's two ways especially for uh, to enter Switzerland. So it would have to be tech or diplomacy, the United Nations. So you would be probably a better fit. What would you be looking at in terms of the job market? Uh, actually, the, what I used to do here in, is, or here in Israel, I don't think I would want to do it or if I'll be eligible to do it in Switzerland. I've been working for the past four and a half years as a news anchor on TV and radio. But obviously, it's in our Latin language, which is Hebrew. Obviously, maybe together it can work out as a good fit. Me um, being legally um, capable of maybe a sc a scoring a certain job, even if it's not a high paying job, just to get a permanent residency. And then through me, maybe he can go to school there, to the university, get his second master's degree that is Swiss, and maybe it will help him 
open up the job market for him and maybe we will start living our lives better after he finished school and he starts earning more money than I am. That's what we thought. Yeah, the thing is for you now, because the ideal way for the for uh, internationals to get into Switzerland is to do something they have a lot of experience in. So okay. right now, if I was to say your experience, your your field or your expertise is news news anchor, right? Yeah. So that's what you would be considered to do uh, in any country, not just Switzerland. I think right now, uh, employers would look at, okay, what is this person a specialist in? So to change careers, which is really what you're looking at, Uh, it would be complicated to do it in a foreign country like Switzerland. Probably the extra step, but it's it's also uh, it would take a bit of time would be first to prepare yourself for that transition where it's easy for you, meaning in where you are right now, potentially. And then once you have acquired expertise, you have what I call a background tracking where you can say, I've been doing this now for one year or something like that. and I have expertise. I'm uh, I'm good at it, you know, I'm an expert. then the Swiss might be a bit more interested. But really the best thing when you get into Switzerland is to already have a big expert background, uh, the EU nationality, the languages, um, and then you have better market. The outside of EU would be if you have a really, really, um, maybe that's why you were contacted. Uh, maybe you developed a product somewhere and they're really interested in that expertise and they would be willing to, To do your paperwork but even sometimes you know that probably was the reason why they didn't keep you is they were really interested in you and then they probably checked with HR because I know how it works we always check with HR last because I had the situation when I was working where the manager was really excited I want this person I want this person and, and then well we need to get a permit and it's gonna take it takes a long time for non EU more than EU so it's uh, several months and probably now times doubled. Because of the lockdowns and everything so they probably went to HR and HR said no way we can't get that person so um, so yeah it's uh, it's unfortunate that there's this uh, selection that's complicated for for internationals to enter so uh, and right now um, really the what you're saying towards everything I'm not sure they would be doing a lot of hiring anyways even for people who are good at it and you Uh, and have ex- expertise so uh, so yeah it's a little bit I think probably your best bet would be if you really want to be in Switzerland is to try to enter a school there uh, and knowing that once you're in a school you know I have a few exp- ex- experience with expats that managed to get an internship and then the internship they were able to get a job so uh, and again it's not a hundred percent cases sometimes people just have to be in school there and realize you know it doesn't work out at the end uh, it's it's a little bit like um, a lottery maybe you're lucky because I've had both cases I've had people and there's no real reason to explain I think it's probably about who's going to be the most uh, the best one with uh, networking and maybe able to get this internship that's going to lead into a job and versus the person maybe who didn't do as much uh, pers- uh, selling themselves and they were able to capture this internship and get the job. So I wasn't able to explain really because I've had two international students who were both in tech or yeah, I think it was tech and one person was able to secure something, the other one didn't. So It's, there's no uh, scientific way really it's uh, it's all about personality uh, maybe you're able to connect with a few people during your time there go to a lot of events uh, yeah it, it, the big difference is going to be the ability to sell yourself and get into those na- local networks and try to push yourself so I think unfortunately especially in technical fields a lot of people are not very good at selling themselves in Europe especially I studied in uh, in California in the US and I was really lucky because over there it's natural you network from the time you're born I think uh, Americans are very open especially in California it's very uh, everyone talks to each other and wants to help you know who do you know etc you can build up your um, your connection very quickly and But in Europe, people are a little bit, especially in Switzerland, people are a little bit more standoffish. So they tend to uh, take longer to warm up. So uh, it's a big 
big struggle for a lot of expats. But what I heard, you said you have connections already there. So you're not starting from base zero. Yeah, we have some friends, both Swiss and also an Israeli friend of ours that works in banking for the past few years. He lives in Zurich. We visited him in the past. And actually, if I might add, um, I we were thinking that even though it's more difficult and more far-fetched and everything, but maybe we thought that I will be able to downgrade both on my salary and on my, my em- professional ambitions, obviously, but only for a short while for him to finish his uh, uh, school, his master's in, in, in Switzerland. And maybe I will be willing to work even basic low-paying jobs at the beginning, just as a new immigrant. And I was thinking maybe to use my uh, personal skills uh, to do maybe even something basic such as working even in a hostel, just like in a receptionist or something as a beginning, only for him to finish his degree and afterwards to start build, build ourselves better. Uh, obviously, it depends on how much I will be paid in order to house us, you know, to pay for rent and stuff. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as much fun as working in something that fits my professional status, but I'm willing to do so just to be able to have this experience and give us a chance in the future to maybe have a life that suits us better in, in Switzerland. So what do you think? Maybe uh, getting a job also in such a basic job, such as working in a, in a hostel somewhere, uh, do you think it's plausible for me? Well, I think your strong, your strength, uh, your main strength is your communication skills. You're very, and you seem kind of a go-getter, dynamic, energetic so I think it's all about, you know, being able to find this person who's willing to give you any type because you're saying you just want to do something, you know, just to get a bit of a salary. So if you come to Switzerland and you're able to connect with a few people, uh, but again, you would have to find maybe people in the same mindset as you. You say you have some friends already, maybe that you you seem to, they're in the same uh brainwave as you because again depending on the person they tend to be very strict and you know everything is online now you have to apply online and everything so they tend to look at the paper first that's what i tell people if you go through paper first you're not going to go through but if you go through connections then it's not about what's on paper so um maybe there's a way that someone would say okay you know i would do your work permit for eu uh, again, with uh, hostels, I would think that now with uh, after the lockdowns and everything, there's going to be so many people that try to get those jobs uh, and that are unemployed and the Swiss want to get the unemployment down. So uh, if I'm a person that's hiring for hotels or reception or anything like that, I would have to get the locals first. So that could be complicated if you have to go through a process. So um, unless you, you, I think it's, again, it's lottery. It's like you find that one person and uh, through your network that you already have and everything can go fairly quickly. Uh, the idea would be maybe to move um, and, and try for a short amount of time, maybe in the spring, you know, maybe just rent an Airbnb or something like that or couch surfing or I know there's lots of solutions out there where you stay, you say, okay, I stay two months or one month or something and see a little bit what I can get through uh, online and talking to people. Yes, this is exactly what we were thinking, that if on March you will get a positive answer for getting accepted to those universities, I will have to stay with friends or rent an Airbnb um, using our savings or him working here in Israel in the meantime, sending me some money and spend a few months there trying to really get that one chance to finally meet in person and make my own personal impression and hopefully maybe I'll get a job, even a low paying job, as long as it pays the bills and then hopefully get him the reunification visa for him to be able to actually attend the university itself and uh, that's it. Well, both of you are very smart. I mean, sometimes I have expats who really dream but they don't really have planning skills and really thinking things through but you you have good brains the two of you so it looks like you could probably find solutions you know (laughs) i wouldn't be worried about you not not finding yourself on your feet you know but i trust me i have some expats who you know they run through the savings and they're really in dire straits and unfortunately you know that's why i always try to tell people connect with me ahead of time so that I can tell you really the reality of it because you can't just come to Switzerland and expect, you know, that everything is going to be so easy. But it seems like you really, uh, you have a lot of energy, you're quite dynamic and you're a go-getter type of person. So 
uh, and you already have, you say, a few connections, which signals to me that you're already able to even connect with people there because um, it's, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. And if you were able already to do this, then I think what you need is to spend some time in Switzerland to, to have a chance to grow your project locally because, again, everything goes locally. Yeah.